Okay, also, me and tech are not friends. Okay. So I'm sorry, I'm old school and I still have nothing to do with mom. Okay, I will. <laughs> So what are we are you recording? Do? I am recording. As far as I know, Erin <laughs> set it all up, and I hope that you will see the screen. Okay. I'm sorry if I'm useless at this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm all cool, and I like like notes and paper and yes. all of that. Okay. All right. So just a little thing from Yoga Alliance. Um, so Yoga Alliance are working hard to support and amplify the movement to make yoga more inclusive and accessible to all. By nature, yoga is accessible. It is the way we are teaching yoga asana that makes it inaccessible. Teachers need to learn how to adapt practice to make any student who comes to learn. Okay. All right. Just tell me if I'm not talking loud enough as well, or if I'm talking too much there. Okay. Can you guys online hear me? Fine. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Okay, so the reality is that anybody should be able to do yoga, as Yoga Lion said. It's the way that we're teaching us uh, that makes it a bit inaccessible. Um, so you are going to come across people with bigger bodies in your class, and it's really important that you know how to prop for them, um, that you don't just leave them and expect or and assume that they can't do anything, but you also can't stop a class and help one person. Um, it's also not enough to just put someone in child pose. I've been to those classes where they're like, oh, you can't do it. I can't just do child pose. But it's not great. Right. Like, you know, you don't want to be doing that to anyone. Um, so it's important part of our job as yoga teachers to know how to equip ourselves to teach these students that come into our classes. All right. Uh, okay. So unfortunately, when we think of yoga, if you Google it, the image of yoga is like slim white woman, you know? So if you search yoga on Instagram, you see all these images that come up. And there's nothing wrong with all the lovely slim people at all. Um, but, <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes you just feel like, I don't have a yoga body, you know? So, and then if you, there's a popular hashtag yoga, everybody is a yoga body. Um, and when you search that as well, it's also slim people that come up which again is absolutely fine, but it's trying to be inclusive and the images are not necessarily portraying that. Um, also sometimes when you search yoga for bigger bodies or yoga for fat people, 
a lot of the videos contain the line, chill and tone or going for weight loss. And yes, it's a benefit of the practice, but it's, it's not the main focus. So it's really not what we should be focusing on. Okay. Um, so going into a class, I know for me, when I started yoga, it can be quite intimidating. Um, you don't have to heal the body, you know, you worry that you can't get into those poses. Um, if they are props, you're not explained, it's not explained how to use them. Um, and if someone, if you're the only person in class and they're like, here's a prop, do this, and you're like, oh my gosh, the floor is opening up and it's horrible, you know. So the language is really important around this as well, how we don't draw attention to somebody's body, how we don't like focus in on one person. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm going to my here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So really need to create space that is, makes yoga accessible for everyone, that makes everybody feel welcome as well. Yeah. Um, so even in terms of our training that we have, um, if you look through your manuals, it's usually some models that are in there as well, and it's showing the best pose, you know, the best version of that, that pose or the fullest expression, okay? Um, and then we're also we're taught for limited mobility or for injury. We're taught how to prop for that, but not necessarily for a bigger body. So it's really simple things that we can do. We'll do a little sequence earlier and we'll see, but it's just small changes and being aware of how you sequence as well. Um, I have to check my notes, yeah. <laughs> so like I said I have a very small studio so when I when I set up for my class I set up all the props that they could possibly need um, if you're going to be teaching at a bigger studio or if you're not going to be setting up all your students I would recommend telling them guys you need x y and z grab a bolster grab a block grab this this and this and have those props available for them but what you'll probably find is that a lot of people don't get props and I feel like that's a little bit of an ego thing. And we really just need to normalize using props because props have helped me a huge amount, you know. Um, this one poses a psycho. I have teensy tiny little arms. I have, you know, belly that gets in the way. And trying to get into that pose is difficult for me. Um, even coming from three-legged dog into low lunge, like my belly gets in the way. So propping is, it's not an easy way out or an easy way of getting into a pose. It's not cheating. It's just, it's helped us access poses and also practice safety without injuring ourselves as well. Okay. Um, I think it's also just really important that if you are gonna provide props, that you demonstrate how to use them. Um, because it's all good and well being like, okay, well, here's a block. <laughs> you know, like, so you really need to demonstrate, explain. Um, there you go. Okay, so we've got some statistics. This is from the World Health Organization. Okay, so worldwide obesity has more than tripled since 1975. As of 2016, more than 1.9 billion people are overweight, and that's about 39% of the population. As of 2016, approximately 41 million children under the age of five were overweight. In Africa, the number of overweight children under five has nearly doubled since 2000. In South Africa, the average size of a woman is a size 18. A lot of our retailers also don't stop clothing that size as well. In America, the average weight of a woman over 20 is about 77 kilos. And we have a similar average for clothing size and similar heights. So it's probably a similar statistic as well. Um, yeah, the average height for a woman in South Africa is 1.59 and in America it's 1.63. Um, so even though we have average statistics, women wearing the same clothing size can have completely different proportions. So all these women are a size 16. They just have completely different proportions. And your yoga practice is going to look completely different. You know, someone's going to be able to touch their toes easily. Someone's going to be miles away from their toes. So this all comes into play. Um, and then, okay, so from a business perspective as well, um, we'll look at South Africa and the Western Cape specifically. So the last census was done in 2011. The population of the Western Cape was approximately 5.8 million people. The, I am bringing up race because unfortunately when you look at the images, it is mostly white women in those images. Okay, so the white population in the Western Cape was approximately 15.7%. And the percentage of women in the Western Cape was 50.9%. So at an estimate, that means that the target market for most yoga studios is 7.85% of the population. That's what we all seem to be gunning for, 
you know, and it's, and, you know, we can make it accessible and yoga is available to everyone else, but a lot of those studios, that, that is the demographic that's practicing there. Um, and as of now, approximately 69% of women are overweight, which makes them a little bit less inclined to draw in a gym or a studio. It can be intimidating. So it's a really small percentage. We're only about 5.5%, you know? Um, so this market is very saturated and we really need to broaden the scope of who we make yoga accessible to. It just makes business sense as well. You know, there's so many yoga teachers and I'm very excited for you guys. But you really, you've got to think out of the box a little bit. It can't just be like, okay, cool. This is who it's going to be. All right. Okay. So if you think about who yoga, how who yoga was created for, as we know it now, it's for boys, for teenage boys. They're little bodies, you know. So someone with a bigger body, it just feels like you don't fit into those poses because those poses weren't created for us, okay? So the simplest way to consider this is how do we create space? Okay, so props act, act as an extension of our body. So bring the ground closer to our hands and get, bring your hands closer to the ground using a strap to elongate. So it's just creating space for you to be able to fit into that pose. Am I talking too fast? No. no. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, and then also being conscious of how you sequence. So if Everyone's on here still? Yes. Okay. So, for example, that transition, three legged dog forward. If you have are bigger, that weight on your hands is very difficult. And, like I've said, to get that leg round and forward is also very difficult. So, there's ways that you can get around it. You can sequence so that you don't move forward at all, you know, so you don't have that transition. Um, there's something, I think it's called um, Mandala sequencing as well where you kind of sequence around the mat yeah so you're not like doing one side then swapping over to the other as well um some things like putting blocks underneath your hands and downward facing dog and just changing where your legs are that changes how much weight is on your arms and on your wrists as well so it's just small things that we can tweak and then one of the things that i would definitely suggest is that if you have a sequence and you get in and you're teaching your class and it is not going the way you expected don't be stubborn with it. You need to be adaptable and you need to change. And I know when you're on the spot and you're new to it, you're like, so just, but you know this, you know it. And do you know what? If you mess up, they don't know. But be willing to change. Don't be stubborn. Don't be like, no, this is my routine and this is what we do. You need to be adaptable. Um, so we touched on this. Language is also really important. So um that singling out in class and i've had that in class where i think we were in hero pose or something and the woman screamed and she's like yeah. and i was like oh. you know, we don't want to be we don't want to be pulled out in class and drawn attention to and sometimes when you're living in a bigger body you feel a little bit uncomfortable you know you're putting yourself out there that you're in that class already um so try to be mindful about how you communicate what you need to be in class. Um, so for example, if someone's like, oh, Sam, your hands aren't touching the ground, use your gloves, you know? Try to cue the whole class. So say, um, if your hamstrings are feeling a little bit tighter, you can place blocks underneath your hands and then demonstrate how to use the different heights as well. So once again, it's all good and well to tell them, use a block, but also demonstrate it as well. Um, I also, there's some terms that I try to avoid. So like the fullest expression of the pose looks like this because that pose that you're in is, it's still a yoga pose. It's no different, it's no worse, it's no better than any other pose. Being in Shavasana or being in an arm balance, it's all yoga, it's all yoga poses. No pose is better than one or the other. Um, yeah, or if you're going, oh, if you're struggling with this, then an easier pose is this, or, you know, the, the basic pose is this. It's all yoga. So what I would suggest is that you, sorry, I'm, my brain is having a little mm -hmm. brain fart, yeah. Um, yeah, so what I would suggest is that I'll offer options. So offer the most basic option first, put them in that position, pause, hold there. Go into the next variation of that pose, pause, hold there. And then the next variation of that pose, 
pause, hold there. And then they can find whichever option works for them. And it's about giving people options because if, say it's your first class or your body can't get into that, if you don't offer options, you just, someone's gonna stand there or you're gonna put them into child's pose. So it's building up with those options as well. So starting low, going high and giving them the choice for whatever works for their body as well. And it's very hard, like we encourage people to not compare ourselves to each other, but we do. So if someone's in class and go, oh, beautiful Tammy, that looks amazing. Then someone else could be like, well, what's wrong with my post? Well, why is mine not beautiful? What am I doing wrong? So I really, if you do feel like you need to compliment someone, then compliment it in a way that maybe acknowledging their progress. Like for example, if someone's been struggling to pick up, into handstand, you can be like, Roxanne, I know you've been working so hard to come up into your handstand, well done. You know, so it's acknowledging the work that they put into that um, and not making someone else feel worse. Um, yeah, also a few other terms that I would be. Um, so I would say a variation of a modification as well, because modification also seems like you, it's a lesser pose. So some people prefer to use tools instead of props, but for me, I use props as well. Um, and then, so tools, like, yeah, props. Tools, so tools, so some people say, the um, yeah, well, the word, yeah. So they won't go, um, here's a prop, like use the, like go get your props, because props is like helping you up, it's helping you. So it's tools to make it better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it's, you know, it's, it really depends, like the language around it, I think as long as you're conscious, and the main thing is to not be singling out one person, and I think that's the main thing, and variations are not the fullest expression, and all this, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I, like I said, I teach a class that is specifically for bigger bodies. So in that class, I, would say okay if your stomach is in the way here you can lift your stomach or if your boobs are in the way here you can do whatever but when you're in a general class that's maybe not specific to that i wouldn't use those terms um again it's drawing attention to someone's body so if for example um you're standing into that and so when you a little bit bigger then this puts pressure on your knees okay so standing wider it's just easier things. There's just space for everything as well. But if someone's standing there and you can see that they're really working hard to keep their legs together and it's uncomfortable, you could say, if you feel like you have some pressure in your knees, maybe take a wider stance. So again, that's giving the option to everybody else. And there might be someone in the class who's not necessarily a big body, but that's also uncomfortable for them. So hearing for the whole class. Um, okay. And also don't ignore someone. <laughs> so it's a big thing. Um, I definitely had this where you go to class and it's a pose that I can't do and that's fine, you know, but don't ignore someone. And I'm sure that Catherine and everyone has drawn this into you. You need to give someone a variation of something. So when you are sequencing, you're building it up. So teaching things on different planes, you know, so they can be done standing up, can be done lying down. So offer variations and just don't ignore someone, but also don't assume that someone just because they're in a bigger body can't do that. So, I mean, I don't know if you paid attention to the pictures mm -hmm. through the slide, you know, these women all bigger body, but they're all very capable, you know, so don't just assume, okay, bigger body, okay, here's a pop, you're going to need this, all right? So language is kind of the, the main thing around this. Okay, quick, easy, over. I don't want to go on about that too much. Okay, so we're going to do a little sequence. Um, so if you guys want to hop onto your mats and then we'll do a little sequence. So you're going to need bolster, you're going to need blocks, and you'll need a blanket as well. Uh, you can have your blankets rolled. And just one 
All right. Can you guys still hear me fine? Yeah. And see. We can hear you, but yeah, now we can see all Matt. I think yeah. Yes, the little hot ones. So I want to roll it too thick, so maybe lengthways, or if you do just unroll it a little bit. I don't know if they're enough for us to all have the firm one. Of the short ones. Of oh, those ones. Sorry, I mean each one. Oh, oh, good. 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 Oh, So all you need on your mat for right now is your bolster and you have it set up lengthways on the mat. Sorry, you're gonna ask me what would you consider a bigger body? Do you know what's strange is I put up a question on Instagram a couple months ago. I can't remember what the question was, <laughs> and it was related to people with bigger bodies. And it I can't remember exactly what it was, but the people who came back would be people that I consider them. So anybody can feel like they're in a bigger body. Um, but it can be from me, it can be to 150, 200, it can be anything, you know. And I think, yeah, so it's so if someone wanted to come and say it, like I'm like in a standard Euro class, like yeah. I'm generally not the smallest person there. Yeah. If I asked you if I wanted to come to class, would you say like actually I think you'd be no. fine, or is it just no. come with where you feel comfortable? Come with where you feel comfortable. Because the thing is, is that it's it's all modification. So it's still yoga. So you come and you weigh five kilograms, you know. <laughs> um, the modifications are going to be there for you, whether you use them, don't yeah. use them, but it's whatever you feel like. Right. So I don't go for my for my big body class. I don't go for the interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from the nation? And if you want to go to a class, you can go to a class. Like, if you come into my class, you can go to my type of teacher. So, okay, so you're going to have a bolster step length waist. You're going to sit in front of the bolster. You're going to come into a supported back bed. So, having a bolster just behind you, and then you're going to back down. Head is on the bolster. These can be bent or straight, depending on how intense you want the back bend to be. And arms can be down alongside you, just down on that. If this is too much as well, then you can also pop blocks underneath your elbows. If this expansion in your chest feels a little bit strong, I think that's fine. All right. I'm just going to be here for a little while. Just gently sink into that back bend. It's not going to be a long practice.
you can keep your eyes closed if you like. You're going to roll the over onto your right side, so coming off the bolster, and then you're going to remove the bolster from underneath you. So keep it close by, so don't lift your weight too far, and then coming back to lie on your back. Your knees are bent, so feet are flat on the ground, and you're setting up a bridge pose. Rounding the feet into the floor, tucking your pelvis up, lifting lower back, middle back, upper back. Weight is on your shoulders, no pressure on your neck. Drawing knees and towards each other. And then slowly lowering down, upper, middle, lower. We feel that pelvis top down. And we'll come up again. Setting up, pushing up. Feel that roll through the side. Slowly lower down. You're gonna to roll towards your left, so the balls to face your balls back. Then you use that ball to push your hand and push yourself up to seated. You can come onto your knees and you can take your ball set and put it behind you. And then sit on your side. So there's a couple of ways to be seated. You can either take your blanket and you can place it underneath your knees and on top of your feet. If that's not comfortable, you can take your two blocks and you can place them underneath your knees as well. You can have a light cross at your ankles or you can sit in Balakonasana. Back nice and straight, hands on your knees. You're going to do seated cat cow. So as you inhale, lifting chest, drawing shoulders back. And exhale, rounding your shoulders. Inhale, drawing up. And exhale, rounding into it. Two more rounds at your own pace. Coming back to the equal spine. You can remove the blanket. You're going to extend your left leg out to the side and have your right leg on the inside of your left leg. Those short foam blocks that you have, place them underneath your knees so that we're not hyper extending our leg here. So if you've got the short one. <laughs> <laughs> if your knee is getting a little bit unstable, you can also place block underneath your knee. Taking one of your blocks, you're going to place it underneath your right hand behind you. And you're going to lift your left hand up and reaching back. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can place your left hand on your hip. Really breathing into that left side. <laughs> On your next inhale, that left hand draws you up, push into your right hand, bringing yourself back. Yeah. And then bring that left leg in front of you. And so the next. So this time, right leg out to the side, placing your small block underneath your right leg. If you need a block underneath your left knee, left hand is behind you, you can be on the block or without. Then inhale, reaching up. And just one long line on toilet. And then next inhale, bringing it back up. And then bringing that leg in. You come onto your knees, take block out of the ball shot from underneath you coming into your tabletop position. You can also try placing your elbows 
on the bust. So if your wrists are feeling uncomfortable or if there's too much pressure on your wrist, you can place your hand on the bust. Right. Also, actual arms, so sometimes it's nice and just creates a little bit more space. Okay. We're going to do a few barrel rolls. So, dipping that belly low, bringing it back up, rounding into your back. One more of this side. And then changing over the other direction. Last circle and coming back to center. You can stay on the elbows or you can stay on your hands, it's up to you. You're going to turn your left foot out to the side and you're going to come into your supported side plank. And then turning your palm to face down and reaching towards the center of the circle, feeling that side stretch. On your next inhale, draw that hand back up and then place that hand back down to center, coming back into your tabletop. Taking your right leg out to the side and then coming into your supported plank on your right side. Um, reach. Taking that palm down, reaching towards the center of the circle, feeling that stretch. Inhale, brings you back up. And then coming back into your tabletop. You can sit back onto your heels, remove the bolster, and grab your blanket. So I have to draw just a little bit, not too much. You can place it just on the ground, right? right. You can walk your hands forward. So you come back into your tabletop and kind of adjust to that little blanket which roll. It would sit underneath your stomach. Walk your legs back a little bit, drawing shoulders into your ribs, and lower down. So your blanket is sitting just underneath your stomach, so basically on your hip bones. Shoulders okay? Yeah, a little bit of a, so I'm just, okay. Yeah. Right. So you want to sit basically just underneath your stomach. We're going to come into our baby cobra. So have your legs a little bit further apart. And as you inhale, draw your chest forward, coming up, chest forward. Push into the blanket with your hips and lower down. As you inhale, coming back up and drawing back down. Last time, pushing up and holding it there just for a few breaths. And lowering back down. Walk your hands slightly in front of you, so they're just in front of your head, drawing elbows in, and then lengthening that spine, pushing up and coming into a still pose. So again, really pushing your hips down into that back and creating a little bit more stability. Shoulders down, away from the ears, keeping legs wide, creating just a bit more space. And then slowly lowering down. Bring your hands back to underneath your shoulders, tucking your toes, and pushing back into your tabletop position. Remove the and you can get your blocks to the first side. So you put them underneath your hands and a Feet. So you're in a forward fold. 
Inhale, halfway lift. You can bring your hands to your shin, or you can use your blocks in any setting. Looking straight ahead. Exhale, forward fold, back down. Inhale, high mountain, reach arms up, shoulders down, away from ears, ribs in. Exhale, to Tadasana. Inhale, high mountain, reach arms up. Exhale, forward fold, all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to shins or using blocks. Exhale, forward fold. Walk your hands forward, bending your knees back into your downward facing dog. Drop your knees to the ground. And then coming up as though you're standing upright on your knees. Bring that left foot forward. So you can place that between your blocks or you can place it on the outside of your block, wherever you feel like it's creating more space. Hands down onto your blocks, tucking your back toe, lifting that leg off the ground. Walking your blocks in just a little bit, we're going to step forward into our wide to us, wide to the forward again. And inhale, halfway lift, has to shimmer on these blocks. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, to Tadasana. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Plant your hands, step your left foot back into a lunge. Drop your back knee to the ground, so left knee. Body comes up off the box, bringing right leg back in. With two variations for sun sensations. All right. Again, bringing left leg forward, you can place it on the outside of your block, and inside of your block. And we're going to come to our Anjay Vinasana. Bring your hands to your heart. We're just rounding into that front foot. Reaching your arms up. We're going to come into a slight back bend, so lifting that chest. Reaching back, pushing hips forward. And hands come back down to your blocks. Sucking your back toes, lifting back knee off the ground, coming into your low lunge. If your foot is on the outside, you can keep it here, otherwise, you can walk it in. So your stance is nice and wide, definitely on two different tracks. Inhale, running into that front foot, bringing your arms up. And also lunge. Good. Bring your hands to your heart, stepping that back a bit a little, and then stepping it forward. Inhale, reach arms up, high mountain. Exhale to last one. Stepping back with your right foot into your warrior two. I want you to take your warrior two just a little bit wider, so you will be creating a little bit more space between your legs. So finding that alignment, front heel to back heart. Rounding down to that front foot. If your arms are tired, or this is the intense for your arms, you can bring your hands to your heart, also to your hands. Placing right hand on right leg, reaching left arm up, reaching back down, feeling that stretch on the side. Coming back to your warrior two, let's stay the same. Straightening that front leg just verbally. And then bending back down. Making sure that your blocks are close by, you're kind of coming to your extended side angle. Arm can be on your old knee, otherwise using your block in front of your hand. Bringing right arm up and over again, reaching across, lengthening that side. Your feet are probably between the two blocks. You're going to bring that right hand down, change back around to the ball of the foot, adjust the front block, and then you can lunge. Dropping back into the ground, untucking back to it, pushing back up, bringing the leg in. This time, bring your right foot forward. You can be on the outside of your block, inside the block, wherever you feel like you've got more space. Lifting, inside, and <laughs> <laughs> Bring your hands to your left. Round into that front foot. Not in the back, in the back leg foot. Inhale, reach arms up. Lifting that chest, slide back. 
hands come back down to the ground. Tucking back toe, lifting back knee. Low lunge. Inhale, reach your arms up. Stepping that back foot in slightly. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, hands to heart. Stepping back with your left foot into your warrior two. Then making it nice and wide. Option for hands, your heart, wrong side, and your legs. And then placing that left hand on left thigh, reaching right arm up and back. Coming back to warrior two. Straighten that front leg, just repeat, and back down. Coming into your extended side angle, reaching for either knee to elbow to knee or hand in front of back. Reaching over. Bring that left hand down, bring the back foot onto board of foot, placing blocks on either side of the foot. Drop back knee to the ground, pushing up. Then bring the box, tap the toes, and pushing back into your downward facing dog. Taking left leg back behind you into three legged dog. And then stacking your hips. So bringing left leg back behind you, keeping shoulders square. Coming back to your three legged dog. And then stepping that left foot to the outside of your left hand. Again, stepping right foot out to your in front foot. Inhale, high mountain. Exhale, hands to heart. You can walk your feet in a little bit or keep them as they are. And stepping back into your warrior two. Reaching right hand back, left hand reaches back up and over. Back to your warrior two. <laughs> I said the wrong thing. Am I doing it wrong? I lost no, you're wrong. I'll be glad to Coming into your center side angle, so the hand comes down or knee to always knee, reaching up and across. We're in right hand down, coming into a low lunge, so the back foot comes onto the board of the foot. Walk your foot in a little bit. So you can either keep chair, you guys will probably be fine with your wooden blocks if you've got these, maybe turn it to the side, these are a bit wobbly. And you're going to either drop the back leg and bring front leg to back leg, or keep that foot up and come back into your plank. If you're on your knees, we're coming into up dog. If you're on your hands or plank, untuck toes, drop hips, shoulders up. Shoulders down, away from the ears, up, tucking toes, pushing back into your downward facing dog. Right leg back behind you, three legged dog. So try when you're in your downward facing dog to just find that spot where there's not as much weight on your shoulders. Set your hips. Pushing even into both hands, good. Back into your three legged dog. Sitting right foot out to the outside of the right hand. And then bring left foot to go in front foot, full fold. Inhale, high mountain, reach arms up. Exhale, hands to heart, Tadasana. Sitting your left foot back into the water two. Then creating that nice wide base. Left hand back. Right arm reaching up and over. Back to your warrior two. And then coming into your extended side angle. So drop, knee. Bring that left hand down. Back foot comes onto the ball of your foot. Adjusting the blocks. So try, if you just the uh, foot, if you just Unsupported plank, try to your knees this time. So place your knee down on the ground, back knee toes, front knee toes, back knee, 
And then same kind of situation, dropping hip, shoulders back. So it's a bit more of a curve than the left dog. Good. Coming back, lifting your butt, tap your toes, pushing back into the double facing dog. Dropping your knees to the ground, removing your box, just off to the side, bring your leg up. One buck and place it behind your left hand, facing forward. Fingers facing away from you. If you don't feel like you need the block, you don't have to do the block. You're going to place your right knee up, right hand on right knee, left hand reaches back behind you. You're going to lift up with our hips, pushing down into that right foot, and we're going to reach our arm back and up. So lifting up, reaching back, up. <laughs> and then as you came in, so lowering your hips, lowering your arm, and coming up to the top of the legs. So moving the top, add the two up to the other side. And good. Facing right hand behind you, left hand on left knee, and then lifting hips, lifting arm, arching back, reaching back. And whenever you feel ready, you can come down. So one more time, each side. So legs foot, right side foot, and right. rounding into that right foot, lifting hips, arching back, feeling that stretch down the front of the side of your body. Good, and lowering down. Last time, other side, right hand behind you, rounding into that leg foot, lifting up, reaching back. And bring the legs around underneath you, grabbing the ball step. And we're just going to come into our child's pose. So it's not going to scroll, so we're not popping to be up here or something. Like, it's just a little bit of support. You can have the back if you want to, but just a very quick popping into your child's pose. You can rest your head on your hand, rest your, your elbows on, your elbows up. Slowly pushing up to the top, moving pulse from underneath you. All those hands on blocks or up blocks, up to you. Pushing up into your last down, facing down. Again, legs wide, trying to find that spot that you can't get anywhere to take your legs. Walking out your legs, just one leg bending at a time. And dropping your knees to the ground, and your blocks. So very simple. Um, the floor is a little bit slower, um, but it's just trying to pop at any stage, create um, as much space as possible, taking off that weight of the shoulders. I know you like the engine. Be prepared for all situations <laughs> <laughs> and doing great. <laughs> okay, so guys, if you want to have a quick toilet break, grab some more water or anything like that, and then we'll go through a couple of poses and how to actually pop it. So just like five minutes or so. Yeah, it's very hot to get. Yeah, we're really cold. Sorry, Ross. Yeah, my voice has stayed. Okay. 
It's interesting it's using a block. Yeah. Because if you've maybe used a block before, yeah. And doing a bit of block now, you feel a little bit. I it's feel a little bit unstable. Yeah. It's tough for you it is. using yeah. a block. Um, and I think for me, like I said, I still go in, and it takes a little bit of getting used to, especially if you're using these blocks. So these blocks, I think as they get older as well, they're not as firm. So you really need a firm block. So if you're going to use cork, or if you're going to be doing it, use the, the wooden blocks as well. But I was slipping them in. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. And it, I felt more pressure on my eyes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, 